Hey, what's happening, Embassy family and friends? I want to share something with you, and it's probably one of the most important things that I've shared in a long time. And I want to start off this way. I want you to imagine that you met someone very special. I mean, incredibly special. So special that you committed your life to them. And you committed so much to them that you wanted to be there for them. I mean, you wanted to be there for them emotionally. You wanted to be there for them spiritually. You even wanted to be there for them financially. And you believed in them. You believed in their dreams. So much so that you were willing to invest in their dreams. But here's the problem. They're not committed to you in the same way. I mean, they're not really showing that type of commitment to you to the point where if you see them once a week, they act like they're doing you a favor. They're not committed to you as far as a relationship and as far as being true with you. And the next question I want to ask you is, how would that make you feel? Well, here's the next thing I want to ask you. How do you think it makes God feel when he's committed to us in such a manner, but yet we don't show that same type of commitment to him? I mean, when we act like we're doing him a favor, when we show up to see him, to have fellowship with him, to spend time with him, when we show that lack of commitment, when he's done so many great things for us, he's been there for us emotionally. He's been there for us financially. He's been there for us spiritually. We wouldn't be here today if it was not for him. But yet the commitment that we show towards him, I know it sometimes breaks his heart. And I believe this. I believe that you, nor I, nor anyone, we don't want to break God's heart. So what must we do? We got to change. We got to repent. We have to recommit our life back to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You have to understand that God sent his best for us. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, for the purpose of developing a relationship and having a relationship with you and I. But yet we treat him like we're doing him a favor when we're coming to him, when we spend time with him. That's not what God desired, it's not what God wants. And the devil is a lie if he's making us believe that. So again, what must we do? We have to repent. We have to change. We have to reprioritize. And we have to make God our number one priority because he's been there for us financially. He's been there for us emotionally. He's been there for us spiritually. In fact, we wouldn't have spirituality if it was not for him. So we have to recommit to him. And if this is speaking to you, and I know it is because you wouldn't be watching this video if it didn't, then it's time to make that shift. It's time to make that change. God wants your time. He wants your talent. He wants everything you own. He wants everything that you are. He wants you to commit all of these things to him. He wants you to commit everything to him. And though it may sound like I'm asking a lot, I'm not because I promise you this, that everything that you commit to him, it will never compare to what he's committing to you. And I'm going to say this in, in my last statement. My last statement is this. The truth is, if he never does another thing, he's done more than enough for you and I in this lifetime. But our God is so good that he's not done. So I want to encourage you, if you need to recommit, recommit your life to him, recommit your time to him. Yes, get back in church if you have not been to church because God loves you and he wants to pour out in you. I know, I know what you're thinking. He can pour into me at my house. Yes, he can. But there are certain things that you will not get unless you are in the fellowship. That's why he designed the fellowship. So recommit your time, your life, your efforts back to him and watch what you get in return. God bless you. See you Sunday.